what's up guys, Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Now, over the last four weeks, I managed to get a respiratory infection, a double ear infection, and a double eye infection. Had to go through two rounds of oral antibiotics, two rounds of eye drop antibiotics, and now I finally got my hearing back in my left ear, and I'm feeling pretty much normal. But yeah, it was a rough month. I spent most of the time in bed because the doctor said I had to rest because it was such an aggressive infection. But now I am back, bitches. I did a couple of live streams over on Twitch TV forward slash Barnacles during that month that I was down. You can go over there and watch the VOD files if you want to see me looking all flush with pink eye and I even threw up once. So anyways, I've been feeling good for the last couple of days, but I've been having a really hard time getting back in front of the camera. But my wife came up with a genius plan today. She literally told me I'm not getting any until I upload a video to YouTube. Oh, man. Now, in the interest of killing two birds with one stone, I've decided to also fix the washer machine because she said unless I fix her broken washer machine, which is a front loader, she can't do my laundry. So I'll basically have to go to PAX West naked and I, and I just don't wanna do that. So today we're doing a DIYgasm on how to fix your front load washing machine so that the door latches shut and it doesn't become a waterfall pissing soapy water all over the room. All right, let's step into my laundry room, shall we? I don't wanna. All right, so this is where all the magic happens. Now we've had this front load uh, pair dryer washer machine combo here from Kenmore for a while. It's the Kenmore Elite Series. If you're wondering, and I'll tell you right now, there is nothing elite about Kenmore products. There just isn't. It does look fancy though. Well, let me show you the problem here. So this is the door latch mechanism. You can see it broke off one day. So I figured oh, I'll just glue it back on. So I did glue it back on there. I tried to close the door and it didn't work. And it's because I figured out this isn't just a simple plastic mechanism. It's a giant freaking electronic board with multiple cables on that run back behind this piece of metal. Of course, it's not a simple mechanism. Of course, it has to be like a million little circuits and diodes and shit just to close a door. So allow me to show you the current experience. Don't do that. You're going to void the warranty. Yeah, that ain't going to fly. All right, let's be honest. I could be like normal people and just call up the repairman, but he's going to tell me that they have to come out and do a diagnostic after setting an appointment. Then once they do the diagnostic, they have to figure out what part is damaged. Then they have to figure out what part to bring to fix the thing, even though on the phone I can tell them exactly what is broken. But they want to go through the paces. Anyways, it would have cost several hundred dollars to get somebody out to repair the machine. So, being the crafty bitch that I am, I went to Amazon.com and just found the part. Now, you notice that the part says, for licensed and certified technicians only. Well, I do have almost a million subscribers on YouTube and I have fixed things before. So I think that qualifies me as certified. Licensed? No. Nope. Now, one of the cool things about this part is this part that I ordered isn't even specifically for this washer machine. It turns out that multiple manufacturers of front loaded washing machines all use the same exact mechanism. There's only like three of them on the market for like every washer machine ever made. And I will, of course, have the links down in the video description. And if this part doesn't fit your washer machine, I guarantee you going from the link on this, you will be able to find the one that does. Now, this part basically cost me 40 bucks. Now, if I install it myself, that's a $40 repair that's going to extend the life of this washer significantly. Now, included in the piece of paper, it said that the the most recommended parts for common problems with this washer machine is 80% the door lock. Sounds right. So we obviously know that fails a lot. And I did some research on the internet. And yes, that is the most failing part on all front loading washing machines. The second one is the fuse. We've never actually blown a fuse, but apparently there is a fuse inside of it that is a serviceable part. And then 5% electrical contacts and 5% board and timer. So realistically, the electronics in this bad boy are rock solid. It's just the electronic door latch that fails. Wait a second, that's an electronic. Duh. All right, let's see what's in the box. Let's see, flip it over. I don't have that knife, so we're just gonna have to tear it. No, 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 no. It's okay, don't worry, I'm, I'm certified. No, 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 I'm certified. No bad knife. Okay, open her up. That is the part. Yeah, so? Look how big that bitch is. Like, that's just the door latch. You see that part sticking through the front, but all this is going on in the back. And you have a wiring harness that connects there, there, and there. So could somebody please explain to me why there needs to be three wiring harnesses to plug in something that literally is just a pin that comes down and holds the door shut. No, seriously, explain it to me. I really want to know. I'm not going to lie. This part does feel pretty cheap and flimsy. I mean, just listen Solid to this. Test, bro. But we have had the machine for probably about eight or nine years. So I feel like I've gotten a good amount of use out of the machine. And if this is all I have to replace to get another five or six years out of it, I'm cool with it. Now it's time for the hard part. Let's see if we can install it. Hey, you guys want to see my pussy? Ah, oh, it's right there. It's pretty hairy, though. Now it's crazy how clean this washer machine has stayed through all of its wash style. The stainless steel tumbler inside of it has no rust, no sign of grime. I mean, it literally looks factory brand new. So does, so does the rest of the washer, really. Now, when you're ordering the part online, this is what you're interested in. Open the door. There'll be a tag there. It'll tell you all of the information on your washer so you know exactly which part to order. 
Now, I just started typing these numbers in on Amazon until I got a hit, and then I read the reviews to see if anybody used it on this specific model. So again, I'm not 100% sure this part's gonna fit, but I'm, I'm, I'm like 95% sure, which is more than the technician I would have paid to come out here. All right, so I've already discovered our first problem, and that is they couldn't just use regular Phillip head screws. They had to use these weird star drive screws, but at least they're not the ones that have the little barb in the center. So I hope that I have something out in the garage that can take those out. I probably should have looked for tools before shooting the video, but honestly, how fun would have that been? Shut up. All right, so once we get the screws out, the second obstacle we have to deal with is getting this ring out, because you can technically take the top off the machine and reach down in there and replace it, but that would require me to move the dryer. So the other method that I was thinking I could use is just to take off this rubber grommet here that's basically protecting the electronics. If I can get that off, I can just go right in through the side and take this out and replace it directly. Now, the problem is the rubber grommet I don't know if you guys can see in the video here, but there's a metal band down in there. It's probably not focusing on the camera, but there's a little metal band. I need to get some pliers or something in there to pull it off. All right, so I told my wife that I could get this done probably in about an hour. So she left with the kiddo to actually go pick up some stuff at Costco. So hopefully we don't hit any huge snags here. So let's head out of the garage, see if we can find some tools and see how seamless of an experience this is. You guys ready to see my clean and organized garage? Let's take a look. No, not really. You're just wasting our time. Let's just get to it, okay? Damn, seems like I just cleaned this place. All right, this is going to be hard to find tools. This is not organized at all. All right, let's see if this little tool chest contains anything we need. No. No. Ooh. Actually, this might be good. It might be one of these. Let's see. Is that? No, it's not a star bit. Two hours later. That looks like a star bit. I don't know if it's the right size. We'll set it aside. Let's just grab a couple. That's what we're looking for. All right, now I gotta find a handle or a drill. I think I'm just gonna use one of these bad boys because if I use a drill, I'm probably gonna end up stripping something out and I don't wanna do that. Dude, it's hotter than balls out here right now. My garage is not air conditioned. All right, so now we need to find some pliers and some pokey things to get that little freaking grommet off there. I like to leave everything out in the open so I can find it easily. Aha! That grommet is really recessed in there though. I think I need some like pointy, like maybe some dental tools. Ha <laughs> ha, dental tools. It's like Zelda. Na 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 na. What's going on, Reinhard? All right, well, if this stuff works, that was relatively painless. I was expecting to search for tools a lot longer than that. I've got a big light set up, <laughs> and the cats are both like, what is it? What is it? I don't know. Oh, my God. All right, so first things first. Let's see if we actually have a bit that's going to fit. All right, let's try this one. Okay, that don't fit. How about this one? Uh, let's see. Ha-ha. That looks like a perfect fit, so we're not gonna strip it out. All right, now getting the screws out is the easy part. The hardest part's gonna be removing the grommet because it does have that little metal band that goes all around this recess. So I'm gonna try to get that out first because there's no point in me taking out the screws and everything unless I know I can remove this and gain access. So you guys see that wire? No. Right there, we have to take that out from around the, around the grommet. It actually looks like it doesn't have a lot of tension, so it's easy to get out of there. Come on, baby. Mm. You guys see the wire peeling off? No. All right, I got the wire off. One thing I noticed about it is it actually has a spring. Holy shit. So that's why it didn't have as much tension. Some of the models that I saw actually just have a, bound, a band of metal that just stretches. So that spring made it a lot easier to take off. So this model is actually pretty easy to work on. All right, so now the band is removed. I should be able to pull this back, the grommet. Lols. But now you can see pulling it back, we have access to all of the electronics. This is gonna be really easy. I'm gonna be honest, I'm getting a little nervous at this point because usually stuff isn't this easy, especially when I've never done it before. All right, so let's start by removing these three screws right here. That's gonna allow me to actually get the old broken switch out of there. Oh, like butter. That's nothing like butter. Like butter. Here comes number two. Here comes number three. All right, there's our three screws. Don't wanna lose those. All right, let's see if we can reach back here and pull it out. All right, All right there's a little plastic bracket holding the wire harness that I have to slide out. I don't know if you guys can actually see that from there. No. But let's go ahead and slide it out. There we go, now I got access to it. And uh, it looks it looks like the same part to me. Now you can see there's the broken door latch inside that had the broken pin. And we have three little wiring connectors that matches up with the other parts. So I think the other part's gonna fit perfectly. All right, so let's start by taking these off. You don't have to worry about the order because they're all different sizes. Okay, there's one, there's two, there's three. And there we have it, one broken part. And you can clearly see in there that the mechanism is actually fully broken. All right, now here's the new part that I ordered off Amazon. Cost me like 40 bucks at the time. Let's go ahead and put them side by side. What are we doing here? They look absolutely identical. No. Absolutely down to every single detail, except one. There is one minor detail here that you'll see is the new part. This part's a little thicker. The, the part around the door, probably because that was the part that failed the most. And the little piece down here at the bottom that the screw goes through is a lot thicker. See how thin it is? No. On this old piece, it's just a little eye. This one has a big eye on it. 
So hopefully those won't affect any kind of fitment issues, but it looks like this is actually a revised part. This is a newer, better built, stronger part. Let's see if the part numbers are different. One ends in 0692 and the other one ends in 0691. So clearly this is one revision newer part. So they fixed the little eye and made it beefier and they made this part beefier because it's te it tends to break. And that's what broke on mine was the actual mouth. And it's pretty damn clear that it's quite a bit thicker just looking at it. All right, clearly the cat has claimed the box as her own. This, this used to be in that box, but now, now Moo owns it. Moo, is that your box? Is that your box? So let's take this and hook it back up. Just say, same order as before. Look, see the six pin goes here, plugs right in. Little two pin jobber here just goes right up at the top. Pops right in. They're not really held in very well. That's one thing I noticed, they don't snap in very well. And let me try this little bottom piece here. Snaps in, let's make sure it fits. That thing's barely held on. I'm surprised those wires don't just pop off there, honestly. Okay, now if I pull the grommet back, let's see if we can get them back into the little plastic harness. Now we're just gonna try to line it up so it sticks through the hole. Well, that was easy. So we got the little nipple there that detects when the door is closed. And it looks like all the screw holes actually line up. Well, shit, that was easy. Oh, they're self-tapping. They just tap into the plastic, so. How else would they work? Requires a little bit of force. Well, I have to say this is pretty damn easy. I don't know why anybody would pay a shitload of money to get this done. Okay, and the final screw up at the top. Well, so far this has been one of the easiest DIY gasms ever, but the last thing is to get the grommet back on here. This guy right here, gotta get it back over the edge and gotta get that little wire over it again. Let's see if maybe that's the challenging component. Okay, there we go, the grommet's on. So now we just gotta get Mr. Stretchy wire back on there. Let's go around top. I'm thinking since it's got a spring, this is going to be pretty easy to do. Anything else, up, bitch? There is no way that was that easy. It wasn't. I helped. <laughs> okay, so that maybe took me 10 minutes total, guys. It didn't give me any trouble. All I needed was a flathead screwdriver to actually get the little ring from around the grommet. I needed a star drive to take those out. Everything else transferred over seamlessly. And now we got a broken part here we can just throw away. Yeah, now I'm gonna break that. Now, while I'm in here, I noticed the door is a little loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up just a smidge. You do that. Let's go ahead and give her give her a little routine inspector Rooney here. Oh, wow, the door's way better now. Okay, so the only thing left to do is test it. Okay, now when I close it, it should latch and not just fly back open, and then when I start to wash her, it should lock it so I can't even open it. So let's close it first. That's a good sign. Okay, it's latched in place firmly. Now, if I start it, let's go ahead and put it on normal mode. Let's go ahead and hit start. Oh, I heard the click. ADHD. Like a boss. Cancel. ADHD. ADHD. See if it unlocks. Damn, I'm good. I feel like a god. <laughs> but seriously, I fixed the whole thing for 40 bucks. That would have easily cost me probably at least 250 to 350 dollars to get a technician to come out and you know they would have overcharged me for the part i paid 40 dollars on amazon i bet you if you ordered the part through like a hand man it probably would have cost like a couple hundred dollars i don't know why i just drifted off in that accent so if you guys have a similar problem and even if you don't have this model it's the same solution some of them you do have to pop the top off to get to that little unit down there but you can buy the part cheap on amazon i'll have a link down below that will get you started on finding the right part for your washer because all the research i've done shows that this thing is used on most of the washers or some variant of it and it is the highest failing part on front loading washing machines so if you don't want to keep buying new washing machines because you can't find the parts anymore or you don't have a service technician or in my case i bought it from sears and sears is like doo, doo, doo. sorry this number has been disconnected or is no longer in service well anyways you get my drift this is a cheap way to fix it hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of diy gasm it's good to be back i was sick for a long time if you guys want to check out the live streams i did while i was sick over on twitch tv forward slash barnacles they'll give you some insight into just how sick i really got and I even threw up, I believe, on one of the streams. But anyways, I digress. I'm back to YouTube. We're going to start making videos now because my wife literally said she's going to stop putting out unless I get my ass back to work and actually start making videos. So here we are. Video number one of many. Also, guys, I'm going to be at PAX West this weekend in Seattle, Washington. So if you're going to the event and you see me, come on over and say hi. I'd love to see you. Also, guys, I'm going to be down at Portland Mini Maker Fair here in a couple of weeks. I hope to see some of you guys down there. I'm going to have my own table sitting right next to the Joel Telling 3D Printing Nerd. Zachariah is also going to be there and Darth Beavis. So guys, if you're there, swing on by. I'd love to sign your shit, give you a hug, and tell you a really bad joke. Also, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments or come over and tweet me on Twitter. I am at Barnacles. Also, we have a Discord server that has over 5,000 users on it right now. It's Discord 
underscore GG forward slash Barnacles. Also have all those links in the video description. And I do live stream over on Twitch TV daily uh, with a few exceptions on twitchtv.com forward slash Barnacles. It's called Morning Coffee. It's every day at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Sometimes I do it in the afternoon. It's a lot of fun. I'd love to see you guys over there. It's a lot more raw and uncut than my YouTube channel, though, so brace yourself. All right, well, obviously I've satisfied my wife's constraints. I fixed her washer machine, so I'm gonna have clothes for packs. And I got this YouTube video uploaded to the channel after nearly a month of being sick, which means I get some, which means I don't wanna be in front of this camera anymore. I wanna be in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying, ladies? All right, till next time, bye. Seriously though, I am handy as f Leave a comment down below or I'm gonna tell some random kid Santa Claus isn't real. I'll do it.